Well, good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone watching online too. Want to make sure we shout out you guys. Um, what's your rule for when you can count that you've been someplace? So, for example, when you tell somebody you've been to another country or another state, what's your rule? Uh, do airports count? Do you have to spend the night? Do you have to touch the ground? And don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about, because all of you have rules. Um, if you don't have rules, you're exaggerating how many places you've been. For me, it depends a little on where I'm going. I've traveled a decent amount, um, not as much as some, but more than others. And I've been to 18 countries in 44 states. And for me, for those to count, I have to put my feet on the ground outside the airport. Um, that's my rule. For example, I've been to the state of Washington. Um, what my visit to Washington looked like was this. I flew to Portland, Oregon for a work trip. So I landed at the airport, I got my rental car, I drove across the bridge over the Columbia River on the 205 into Vancouver, Washington. I took the first exit, found a parking lot, got out, walked around my car, got back in my car, drove back to Portland. Um, so I've been to Washington. You know, don't laugh at me, they're my rules, I get to decide. That's also how I've been to the Netherlands and to Luxembourg. Got uh, into a parking lot, walked around the car, got back in, drove across the border. It used to be that a country would count when you got a passport stamp. Um, that's not the case anymore, especially in Europe. They had no passport stamps between countries. So that's why I decided my rule is touch the ground outside the airport. That's also why I've never been to Japan or Colombia. Um, I landed once in Bogota, Colombia. Um, they didn't even let us off the plane. So that doesn't count. Um, I've also been to the Narita Airport in Tokyo, Japan, but it was a short layover. I never left the airport. I haven't been to Japan. So now I know people are sensitive about their rules and I'm bringing a lot of heat and controversy into church this morning, but that's okay. Getting a challenging message at church is good for you. So it helps you grow. Um, there's one exception. Uh, I once filled out this thing online that showed every county I had ever been in in the US. And all I had to do for that was to drive through the county for that to count. So if I was driving cross country on the interstate, um, all those counties counted. I wasn't gonna get out and walk around the car every county. Let's not get crazy. Um, and they, they are my rules. So, And just because I know how interesting this is and how interested you are is, uh, you are, here's the map um, of all the counties that I've been to. Uh, right there, and you can see up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see where I drove across the Columbia River into Washington. Um, I was thinking about borders, uh, the subject of borders, because that's going to come up today. Um, we're wrapping up our series of the most important words around here, um, where we're talking about the four words that represent sea life's vision, where God is calling us to go uh, at in, as a church in this next season. Now, to begin the series, Pastor Hannah shared about the word next, and that Sea Life commits to answer the, our call to fight for and disciple the next generation. We learn that most people who become followers of Jesus do so as children or youth, and, but that that number is shrinking, and that the church as a whole is always just one generation away from ceasing to exist. But we're not going to let that happen in the corner of, our, of the church that we're responsible for. So next is an important word. Then Rod shared about the word belong. And that sea life commits to be a community where everyone has a place and everyone can be known. The Christian faith happens best in community. And we are community life after all. So none of this should be a surprise to you. Um, but Rod also shared how you don't have to believe before you belong. We want this to be a place that no matter where you are in your faith journey, even if you're just exploring, that you know this is a place where you're welcome and you can have community. We want you here. And we're, we are better when you're here. But make no mistake, our goal is that for you to be in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I'm a Jesus follower because he claimed to be God, 
predicted his death and resurrection, and he pulled it off. Um, he also convinced all of those closest to him, including his own brother, that he was God. All of that's enough for me to follow, follow him. But we also want you to follow Jesus because we think that following Jesus is the best way to live. And that God will use that relationship to change you and to change me and to change all of us into his likeness. So Renee talked about our third word, transform. Sea Life commits to support and celebrate the life transformation that inevitably comes from an authentic relationship with the living God. And notice the wording here. We're not transforming anyone. Only God can do that. He's the one who changes hearts. Instead, we're going to support that transformation. We're going to offer environments and teaching and accountability when it's welcome and celebration for each step on the way. But it's through a relationship with the living God that we are actually transformed, that we grow to be more like him, loving, giving, serving, sacrificing like him, which is why we don't want to just leave you at the word belong. Um, if, now, if this is a place, if a place to belong is why you're here, we're really glad you're here. You belong here. Um, community is a great thing, and especially a community based on Jesus. And community is great for celebrating and supporting. But we don't want to leave you there. Our community here isn't going to change anyone's heart or your life or your eternity. Jesus does that. And here's the thing. We don't want you to stay there either. We don't want you to stay in transform. Yeah. Wait, what? Matt, you don't want us to stay in a close relationship with Jesus that brings transformation? Well, yes, of course I do. Um, but here's the thing. If we're in a relationship with him, if we're following Jesus, we are going to transform. That happens when you interact with God. But we're not simply going to stay in transformation. Here's what I learned from a guy named John Hambrick, who's on staff at North Point Community Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, community is a good thing. That's our word belong. That's the name of our church. Community is good. We're wired to spend our lives surrounded by other people. When that doesn't happen, we miss part of what it means to be fully alive. Um, it's difficult to find a worldview anywhere that disagrees with the idea that we need each other. And at Sea Life, we want you to belong no matter where you are on your faith journey. And we want you to belong in a Christian community, one that's focused on Jesus. That's our word, transform. But from a Christian point of view, community, even Christian community, is not an end in itself. The purpose of Christian community, the point of you belonging here, the purpose of his church is to function as a vehicle which God pours out love into the world. That's why we're here. Now, it all works together. One word's not more important than another. It's through God's transformation of our hearts that this happens within the context of our community. But it only works if our transformed hearts that belong to a Christian community, go, go to our fourth word, which is beyond. Sea Life commits to share the message of Jesus beyond the walls of our church and beyond our borders until everyone knows. When a Christian community detaches itself from what God is doing in the world, that community begins to stagnate. Um, ever been part of a dying church? Stagnate is a kind word to describe what happens there. Now, this can happen to a small group, it can happen to a church, it can happen to a denomination. When it focuses only on itself, it starts to lose the reason for its existence. It's an insider focus, which is one of the most common spiritual illnesses found that is not looking beyond itself. Another symptom is that Decisions are made based on the needs of the church. Not the needs of the community, not the needs of the people who don't attend the church. Who are those people that we're trying to reach? Instead, decisions are made based on what's easy and make us comfortable. And finally, the desire to go deeper 
becomes more important than the desire to love and serve those outside our community. In an insider view, there's a push to move beyond the basics of the faith because insiders already know the basics of the faith. Now, don't get me wrong. Going deep with God in your faith and going deep in your faith is great. Um, you should do that. And if you need help finding tools for going deeper, let us know. Um, we'll be happy to point you in the right direction. In part, that's also what makes our, uh, what our community groups are for. So if you have a desire to go deep, make sure you're connected to a group. But if we as a community are going deep at the expense of or isolating those who are new to the faith, we're missing our target. And frankly, if you're a longtime follower of Jesus who has a need or a desire to go deeper, our target isn't you. Um, instead, you're the one we want to aim at our target, which, are, which we call the unchurched, those who have never heard the good news of Jesus, or those who have never been to church or have been away from church for a minute. That's why we want you to go beyond, beyond our walls, beyond our borders, until everyone knows. Now, every Christian community sometimes experiences some of these insider-focused problems, but the good news is that they're easy to fix. There's a simple solution. It consists of figuring out how to love people and serve those outside the Christian community to go beyond. Sea Life commits to share the message of Jesus beyond the walls of our church. Who are the people beyond the walls of our church? Well, of course, they're the people who don't go to our church, and specifically those who don't go to any church. Um, Kerry Newhoff, a Canadian pastor and teacher, was challenged one time when he realized that God loves the people outside his church more than inside, the people inside his church. Now, that sounds almost blasphemous to say, and of course, God deeply loves everyone. I think a better way to put it is that God is focused more on the people outside the church than inside the church. But even that's a hard thing to say. But remember the story of the lost sheep that Jesus told us. In Matthew 18, Jesus says these words. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hill and go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. Carrie asks, um, if you have four kids and three of them come home from school, are you going to say, well, at least I got three of them? Uh, no. You're going to drop everything and desperately seek out that lost child. That's how God feels about those beyond our walls. I've sometimes joked um, from up here when talking about the word beyond that if all we did here on Sunday mornings and what happened inside these walls was just about us, uh, that we'd be out. Um, it's a lot of work just to focus on us. But that's not literally true. What we do here on Sundays is really important. And a lot of people work really hard to make all this happen. Um, on Sundays, we're connecting to the living God and are being transformed through teaching and worship. Uh, people get a sense of belonging and fellowship by coming together, connecting in community. Kids and adults are hearing about Jesus. People are learning to serve and learning to give. So yes, all of this is very important. But as we're planning and preparing for Sundays, do you know who we're thinking about? Who we're planning for? We're thinking about the people outside the church. The people who have never been here before but who summon the courage to come to our church for the first time, which can be scary. The people, your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends from school, who you invited. That's who we're thinking about. Uh, just this morning, we had 26 people who have volunteered their time for the hospitality ministry, for Sunday support, or to help check in kids. Now, that's not counting all the other people on the worship team, and sound and media and kids volunteers who are needed to put on, on the actual service. But 26 who are greeters in the parking lot and at the door to have a friendly face, who will smile and say welcome. 
Uh, we have people who made sure that there were enough chairs set up and that they, who made the coffee and who made sure this room was clean and ready for you uh, and to make sure your kids are safe and ready to have fun and to learn. If you've been coming to Sea Life for a while, you know what? Um, those people aren't there for you. Instead, they are there so that the people who are new or who have been away from church for a while or who have never been part of church know that they are expected and they're welcome and that we're glad they're here. That's who they're for. Now, yes, of course, we want everyone to feel welcome and expected and know that we're glad you're here, whether you're here for the first time or the thousandth time. We're better when you're here. But if you're an insider, if you consider Sea Life your home church, you already know that. You know you're expected. You know we're glad you're here. And we want you to be the ones who are thinking about and welcoming and talking to new people. We want you to be a part of the hospitality ministry or Sunday support or serving kids. We want you to be thinking about those beyond the walls of our church. Um, and I'll also tell you that if you are new, you don't get to be new for very long. Um, we want everyone who comes regularly to see life to be thinking about the word beyond. Studies show that when someone visits a church for the first time, they typically decide within the first 10 minutes whether they're coming back or not. That's before the first song, before any message. What makes the difference? Uh, did someone talk to them and notice they were there? That's who we're thinking about when we put all of this together. And not so we can have a big or cool or fun church. We want to be welcoming so people know this is a place they can belong. But it's not even that. We do it more so that more people will come to know Jesus. John 13 says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's part of our transformation process, to become more like him by loving one another. And that means we're not insiders thinking about us, but disciples who think beyond the walls of the church. And if we're thinking about beyond the walls of our church, we're also thinking about more than just Sunday. We're looking for ways we can serve beyond those walls, too. Um, we're building relationships with our coworkers and our neighbors and the ones who we go to school with. As we talked about in our last series, we're seeing needs and meeting needs that we're called to meet. And you guys are amazing at this. Um, playing bingo at our, with our friends at Melinda's Melody, opening your homes to host community groups, picking up multiple carloads of kids to bring them here on Sunday mornings or to elementary community groups, bringing food to youth or to feed the Radford High football team, which are just some of the activities that have come up just in the last few weeks. That's why we do things like Love the NRV Day, why we make snack bags for the school sports teams, why we send kids who aren't even part of our church to camp. All of this is about going beyond our walls. And those are just some of the organized church stuff. You guys do innumerable other things just because you love people well. When you check in on your elderly neighbor, uh, when you volunteer to babysit for a single mom, when you make friends with the kid who's new to the school, when you invite people to join us here so they can know this is a place they might belong. You offer to meet them, you offer to pick them up, you offer to sit with them. All of these things are reasons, are some of the many ways you look beyond our walls to the church to show that people that Jesus loved them. And that's what God's calling us to do, and that's what Sea Life commits to. That's how God is pouring out his love on the world. It's through you. You are his plan A, and there is no plan B. In a letter the Apostle John wrote that we call 1 John, he wrote these words as they're translated in the message version of the Bible. This is John writing to who he is writing to. From the very first day we were there taking it all in, we heard it with our own ears, saw it with our own eyes, verified it, with our own hands. The word of life appeared right before our eyes. We saw it happen. And now we're telling you in most sober prose 
that what we witnessed was incredibly this. The infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We saw it, we heard it, and now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. Our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. Our call is to love people and tell them about Jesus. Sea Life commits to share the message of Jesus beyond the walls of our church and beyond our borders. Let's talk a little bit about borders. I've told you some of the borders I've crossed. Um, some borders are routine. I live in Christiansburg, so I cross that border, the Montgomery County Pulaski border, and the city of Radford border every time I come to Sea Life. Others are less routine. Um, my son is in the Air Force, and he had to go to South Korea on a work trip. And when he was there, he went to visit the border between North and South Korea. Um, that border is no joke. There is a building there where one room is actually in North Korea, the only place in North Korea he was allowed to go. Um, here's a picture of him flashing the hokey sign in North Korea. <laughs> Look at those guys behind him. God put sea life in Radford, Virginia, in the heart of the New River Valley for a reason. He wants us, along with all the other churches in our valley, to be responsible for telling people in our valley about him. He wants us to share with the family what it's like. He wants us to share with the students who come to our universities for a season. But he doesn't want us to stop there. We're not simply called to just our valley. We are called to tell everyone until everyone knows. The last words Jesus said after the resurrection and before he ascended into heaven were reported by the disciple Matthew. These words of Jesus were, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Our call our responsibility is that everyone knows. That's our mission. The Great Commission, it's called, that he's called all of his followers to. Now, of course, that's far more than just us. That's his whole church and his whole church throughout the world and throughout time. But that includes us. Part of our responsibility is to care about those beyond our borders and to pour out God's love on them, too. That's why Sea Life has sent teams to Nicaragua and last summer sent a team to Ecuador. That's why we've sent teams to Boston and New York to, fill, uh, to fulfill our call to teach and train our people to answer the call to go beyond and to take what God's given us and share it with others. And these won't be our last trips, I promise. So when the next trip comes up, make sure you're prayerfully considering is that for me too? Finally, let me ask you about one more border that God is calling us to go beyond. He's calling us to go beyond ourselves, beyond our comfort zone, beyond our history, beyond our limitations, beyond the box that we've put what we think God is able to accomplish through us in. Where in your life is God calling you to step beyond the walls that you have up, the borders that you haven't crossed so others can hear about him? Who is he calling you to love, even if it's hard? Who is he calling you to meet, even if it's uncomfortable? Who is, where is he calling you to step outside yourself and be an insider and to welcome an outsider? I became a Jesus follower as an adult, an exception to the rule that most, of, most people come as kids. Uh, my daughter had been born, and it was really important to me that I teach my daughter um, to raise her with a strong sense of right and wrong. So I was searching. And I'm from Southern California originally, and I started a job at a motel right across the street from Disneyland. I could walk out the door at 9.30 every night and watch the fireworks. I, in my first two days on the job were the last two days of a guy named Greg. Um, Greg's a great guy uh, who really liked to talk, and we got along really well. 
And one of his first questions to me was, do you go to church? And I told him no, and so he asked why not. Now, it was the off-season. I think it was February, so the, the motel was not crowded at all. There was nobody there. And basically, we had two eight-hour shifts to debate about religion. And I got to hear all about Jesus. Now, I didn't become a Christian right away. That would be a much better story. But after those conversations, I decided that the best way for me to raise my daughter with a strong sense of right and wrong was to raise her in church. I didn't want to decide for her about Jesus and about religion and about God. She could make her own way as she got older, but I realized if I didn't raise her in church, I was deciding for her. I wasn't giving her the opportunity to make that decision, which is another reason, by the way, even if it's really hard, get your kids to church. So we started going to church. Um, we were fortunate that we found a great church that welcomed us with open arms. It very much had a sea life vibe to it. I told the pastor, I'm not a believer, but I want to bring my family. Is, are you okay with that? He said, of course. And it quickly became a place where we belonged. It was a matter of months later that Lisa became a Jesus follower, and sometime after that that I did as well. And the rest is history, my history. How did that happen? Well, Greg's life had been transformed by a relationship with the living God. And he had the courage and the conviction to step beyond his comfort zone and share the love with Jesus with me. He cared that I was unchurched and was willing to share what he thought was a better way. He didn't stop at next, but was concerned that everyone would know, including me. God led me to a place where I belong. I could belong, and he started to transform my heart until I reached a place where I was ready to step out beyond myself and share with the next person as well. And so on, and so on, and so on. Over and over again, throughout history, that's the story of the church and God's plan to love the world. Sea Life commits to share the message of Jesus beyond the walls of our church and beyond our borders until everyone knows. So, let's get practical. What do we do with this? So many of you guys are so much better at going beyond than I am. You should be up here telling people how to respond, but here's a couple of ideas about how to go beyond. Let's start here on Sunday morning. Are you contributing to a culture where the unchurched feel like this is a place where they can belong? One way you can do that is by serving on the hospitality team or Sunday support. If that's something you're interested in doing, let me know, and I'll introduce you to the team leaders. You can go beyond by being a person who welcomes and talks to new people who are new. Now, let me interrupt you before you interrupt me. Yes, sea life is getting bigger. And yes, it's embarrassing when you go up to somebody and say, are you new? And they say, no, I've been going here five years. I'm the assistant pastor, and I don't know everybody who's new. So no, I don't expect you to know that either. So what's the solution? Don't ask if you're new. Instead, just introduce yourself and say, I don't think we've met. Now you're in a conversation, and you can say, have you been coming here long? You're off and running. And even if they aren't new, you've met somebody who you didn't know and can help them find a place to belong. So if you are new today and I come up to you and say, I don't think we met, yes, that's intentional. But it's not Rod and Renee's job or the staff's job or the greeter's job to make sure this is a place where people feel welcome. It's the job of everyone who considers Sea Life their home church. And I'm really grateful that you all do such a great job at this. Another way you can go on, uh, go beyond is to show up for the activities the church is putting on. I know all of us are busy, and everyone doesn't have to be a part of everything, but are you part of something? We're better when you're here, and we need you to show up. So when people, when there's a call for people to hang out at Melinda's Melody, or Love the NRV Day rolls around, or Monday Night Youth is looking for help, or any of the many things that we have going on for the blessing our community, 
Step up and show up. Go beyond the borders of what is comfortable and be a part of it. And I'm really blessed to be a part of a church that does show up. You guys are great at that. Finally, be an inviter. Invite people to church. Now, I will never promise you we won't be weird, but I will promise you we will be welcoming to whoever you invite. Invite someone to a community group. Invite someone to an event. Invite someone to lunch. Now, and hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying invite somebody to lunch and then pull out your list of 10 reasons they should become a Jesus follower. Um, just be a person who cares about other people who is willing to step beyond their comfort zone and love people well. Be somebody who goes beyond and watch God work. Sea Life commits to share the message of Jesus beyond the walls of our church and beyond our borders till everyone knows. So that's the vision of our church that God has given us over the next season. Whether that season for you is one year or 10 years, that's what we're pursuing. Next, belong, transform, and beyond. If that's something you can get on board with, get excited about, I promise there's a place for you to be a part of what God's doing through us as individuals and through us as a community. And I hope you'll be a part of what we're doing as well. Can you guys stand with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you care about the people who don't know you yet so much that you're willing to have us step into a place where we can go beyond ourselves. And we ask you to help us be a church that shows up, that invites, and is always welcoming to anyone who walks through our doors. We thank you that you are drawing people here every day. And we ask you to keep working in them and in us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
this week, I've been thinking about something that Noah shared on Monday at youth worship when we sang this song that, um, you know, sometimes we really do feel lonely, but God steps into our Egypt when we're alone, takes us by the hand and walks with us. Um, and that's just been a really great reminder that Noah shared with us and I wanted to share with you. So um, before we close our time together today, let's pray for our offering. Um, and giving can be such a sacrifice. Uh, but if we think about the sacrifice that Jesus gave to us, it doesn't even compare. Um, so if you'd like to give today or set up a regular amount to give each month or week, you can do that on the Sea Life app. You can scan that QR code. Um, if you're here in person, we have a giving table in the back. And yeah, uh, guess we're glad you're here. If someone walks up to you today and uses those words, it's not that Matt told us to. But maybe it is. We're glad you're here, though, for, for real. Um, and please stop by the welcome table in the lobby. Let's pray before we leave. Lord Jesus, you are the pursuer of our hearts. God, you are the one who seeks us, who sees us, who loves us, who goes and finds us when we're on our own in our Egypt. And so, God, I just pray that every person in here feels that today. God, we pray for our offering, Lord, that we can sacrifice and give to you, Lord, for what you're doing, and we can be a part of that. So, God, bless our time, bless our week as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. Take somebody out to lunch.